Well, hello there and welcome to my workshop. Now then, if this was a gardening channel and I was a gardener, I'd be saying, now's the time to dig up your beans and plant your brassicas. But this is not a gardening channel and I'm not a gardener. Carolyn does all that. So, in the guitar world, I think it's the time of year to approach the old crate that you made to move your guitars when you moved your house two years ago in the corner of what will be a studio sometime and uh, have a look at my favourite bass guitar that I made, I don't know, about 10 years ago but to be honest with you, could do with a bit of refinement. Let's get going. Well, okay, so what's wrong with this bass guitar? Well, there's a few things. One is I glued the neck in and I got the angle slightly wrong, which meant that I needed to sink the bridge in. However, before I sunk the bridge in, I tried to adjust the bridge by filing the slots to let the action go down and that resulted in a rattle. So I did sink the bridge down, but I don't think I've sunk the bridge far enough uh, because the action is still a bit too high. I think it's a bit of a rattle, so the frets need to be redressed and flattened and leveled. So that, that needs to be done. But the real bugbear with this guitar is that I put the pickups here but I like a, a much sort of softer, rounder tone and I think I would have preferred the pickup just behind the neck here. So I've got myself another pickup, this one here, and my plan is to put that there and arrange some sort of switching to allow me to switch between the two pickups. It's going to need some routing or chopping out some slots on this guitar. So uh, it's going to be a bit interesting. I don't want to mess the guitar up. I want to try and avoid making too much, um, well, too many changes on it. Um, I should be able to get in the back there okay, so that should be all right. So, well, let's give it a go. I'll get the strings off and then I can have a look at this fretboard. You may have noticed these bits of plastic in here and these have been put in to stop it buzzing. I'm hoping that I can correct that problem now, even though I have filed that bridge. But at the end of the day, if I need to get a new bridge, I'll have to put a new bridge on it. Anyway, the strings are off. And I think while I'm at it, I'm going to take this tailpiece and bridge off as well. When I was at school, I played uh, bass for a couple of bands. We weren't particularly good, but uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And I had a Jetson short neck bass, which I bought from a mate for about six pounds, I think, uh, which was really nice. I mean, but it, it used to rattle like nobody's business. I mean, it was a beautiful guitar, but I just didn't like the short neck. And um, when I started making guitars, it was one of those things that I thought, I, I have to make myself a long neck bass. And in actual fact, I made two. I've got this one and I've also got a, a fretless bass because that was, that was another thing that I always fancied having. And um, so I made the two guitars together. Now this guitar is made with an ash top, but it's actually got an oak back. So it's really heavy. Uh, the next maple and this fretboard, well, it was a fretboard I bought. I, I really don't know quite what the wood is. I mean, if I'm honest, the wood is slightly the wrong colour to go with the colour that I did the guitar. Karen always says to me, it should be a darker fretboard. I mean, if I can do something about that, I might, I might see if I can have a go at that. I know what she means. It, it sort of clashes with this sort of red 
um, you know, burst that I've got. But uh, yeah, not so good at uh, choosing my colours. Anyway, I get this bridge off. It's um, sort of fixed in a bit. I think I might need to give it a tap. Can't see. I can't, I can't actually see why. Oh, there it is. It's just, just a bit tight. Yeah. So you can see um, where I've chopped it down. <laughs> you can also see where uh, there's a is a mistake for you. Um, this is the earthing wire, which um, has still got its uh, shielding on. So there's no way that would ever have earthed the strings. So uh, that's an int <laughs> interesting problem. Um, yeah. Oh, I suppose it would have gone down into the hole there. Yeah, I suppose there's some logic to it. Hmm. OK, well, I'm going to have to take that down a little bit. Um, I did it with a chisel last time. I'll do that the same again. So, right, let's put all this to one side. Now then, given this guitar was made a number of years ago when I was uh, a very naive guitar maker, I probably didn't check how level that fretboard was. So I'm going to use my fretboard leveler. Um, if you've not seen this in use, um, please go check out the uh, video where I, I made it. I'll try and put a link up in the corner there. If not, hopefully there should be a link in the description if I can remember to do it. Anyway, so what I'm going to do with this is set this fretboard leveler up on my uh, straight edge here so that I know it is absolutely level and to do that I need to adjust these screws the principle behind this is very simple there are three bolts going through this block of wood and to make sure that it's level I need to adjust them so that it doesn't rattle but it so I should just all to this middle one and then just should have said bolts not screws nearly there okay so I'm not getting any rocking there this is like a, a fret rocker for a fret board if you like OK, so now we'll try that on the guitar. OK, so you can see that this neck has got quite a bit of back bow in it. Now, obviously, I've taken the strings off, so perhaps it's um, it sort of released the tension and pulled back. But I should have relief on there, not actually back bow. So that's something I'm going to need to adjust. And to do that, I need to take off this rather dusty truss rod cover. Don't get me wrong, this does get played. It's just that we've had a quite a bit of building work in the house. I'm trying to avoid getting my hand in the way of the camera. OK, I shall put those in one of my tuner tins to keep them safe. If you like tin tuners, don't throw away the tins because they're really great for keeping little screws and things safe. OK, now to fiddle with a mysterious thing known as the truss rod. Now then, in theory, if I want to remove back bow, I'm going to have to tighten it. So let's give it a quarter of a turn. Oh, that's going to be really tight. That is really tight. Yeah. That ain't going to move. Whoops. That truss rod looks like it's pretty well jammed in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to do much about that. Now, this is not the first time I've been faced with that problem. Um, the uh, red fender 
strat that I've got, well it's not a, it's a Squire strat, but the one I bought from eBay had the same problem in that somebody had tried to adjust the truss rod and completely messed up the end of it so couldn't do anything with it. So my approach there was to whip out all the frets and re-level the fretboard using um, well some sandpaper get it as flat as I could in the hope that once I string, strung it up uh, it was going to introduce the relief that I needed and sure enough it did. Um, so I, I'm hoping that that's what I can do here. Unfortunately that means whipping out all these frets. But that might be a good idea anyway. I'm actually not too worried about this truss rod issue because this neck is quite chunky and um, when I built the guitar for the use what you've got challenge out of a uh, fence and I used an Aris rail which is just really cheap wood for the uh, the neck um, I didn't put a truss rod in it I put a piece of uh, maple in the middle just as a wooden truss rod and um, well it's quite a few months later and the thing is still pretty flat and um, well I haven't tuned it up for ages but a bit out of tune but the neck has stayed pretty stable anyway I don't think I glued these frets in but what I'm going to do is just heat them up with a soldering iron and uh, lift them with a this pair of whatever you call them pliery type things. These frets were put in in the days before I knew about how um, Ben Crow does a little V on the top so uh, there's a good chance it's going to pull a bit of the wood of the fretboard out so I might have to deal with that as well but uh, we'll see it's actually not too bad I think if I tidy that up with a bit of sandpaper it should be okay just 20 more frets to go I don't think these frets are glued in because it's coming out quite easily. Um, as I said in my last video when I was doing the great guitar build off, um, sort of tidying up the frets with that guitar, um, I, I found that the pressure of the strings really keeps the frets in so I, I, don't, I haven't worried too much about putting super glue on or wood glue. By the way I, I know at least one of uh, you keen-eyed folk notice that the uh, one of the frets in the great guitar build-off guitar the tang has actually gone through the binding <laughs> I, I hadn't spotted that and I don't know quite how I did that so that will be another fret that's got to come out I didn't really know how to do binding when I made this guitar so uh, the frets just went straight in I do love a fretboard that is bound though there's no doubt about that it does make the guitar look so much better and in actual fact putting the binding on if you make sure that the fretboard is slightly narrower than the neck at the start it's not a problem and it does make the guitar look oh, much better
I'm beginning to think these were glued in, you know. Well, that's the last fret popped. And um, as I've been looking at this, I've been looking at the finish of this guitar and I think I can do better now than I did those years ago, um, especially with some of that man's uh, two-part epoxy. I think it'll give a better finish. So I think the next job will be for me to strip out all the electrics and um, let's take this guitar back to its bare bones. I don't want to affect the, um, the stain. I rather like the colour and the grain, but I think I can give it a bit more gloss. Good afternoon. Now then, I started working on the guitar yesterday afternoon and by the time I got all the frets out it was sort of time to pack in and it was probably a good thing because the first thing I realized last night was I was turning the truss rod allen key the wrong way trying to tighten it up instead of loosen it which was a bit of a silly idea to do nevertheless the truss rod is completely stuck so that is a bit of a problem and I was just thinking, I've never really liked this fretboard. So why don't I take it off and replace it? And in doing that, I can also try and sort out what's wrong with the truss rod. And I might even go as far as actually refinishing the whole guitar. Because as I said, it is my favorite bass guitar, this. But um, it's one of the, the first guitars I made and quite honestly the finish really isn't that good it could be improved and I even wonder whether I can make the thing a bit lighter by um, carving a bit more off it so first thing to do as I said yesterday take all the electrics out well I'm going to be filming the whole process so um please if you've got any uh, suggestions ideas or if you spot me doing something really stupid uh, I'd be really grateful for you to uh, send me a comment I have a feeling that this this knob has been glued on so you may have to be uh, replacing the pot yep I think it's glued on yeah look at that why I'm not sure but there you go okay all in a day's work hey eh? Or screwdriver. I've not looked in the back of this for let's I don't know eight years. Okay, anyway, a funny bit of tape there. Okay, let's have a look at these pickups. Well, these cavities were all routed by hand, so they're not very um, precise. I think I'm just going to snip this wire. I think that should be glued onto there, so I'll need to fix that as well. Okay, what's that little lock coming out? I'm going to snip the wire, make my life easier. I managed to get a batch of these tiny little screws ages ago, but I've never been able to find them since. I don't know if anybody knows where to get these from.
Okay, now the machine heads and the nut. Now I made a real rookie mistake with this guitar. Originally I fitted these um, machine heads and I fitted them round the wrong way so that when the string was pulling it pulled the cog away from that uh, uh, that screw there and um, as a consequence to that the strings would not tighten so I thought that there was these were duff so I took them off and I bought these go-to ones um, but of course there was nothing wrong with these it's just I used them wrong always drill a pilot hole because you get into this problem where it buggers the head of the screw so that'll have to be fixed okay well that looks a bit of a mess doesn't it okay so that's the last of the fixtures taken off got to take the nut off and the fretboard before I do that Let's have a look at what options I've got for replacing this fretboard. Now then, to do that, I need my water spray and some examples. What have I got? These are fretboards that I've already cut. So, I've got walnut, Santos rosewood and olive now I, I'm really not keen on the olive just it really just doesn't go with this this guitar this is the Santos Rosewood I love the figuring on this and um, I've got a few other pieces with uh, sort of the same sort of figuring let's just wet it down a bit give this an idea what it looks looks like with oil yeah sort of quite like that that's not too bad at all but I've also got this piece of walnut which down on this end has got some lovely quilting look at this Now, that's really rich and dark. And, and I think, if I'm honest, that I prefer this one because I think it'll go with the burst. And I'm, I'm sort of debating if, how to change this. If I can get all this off, um, I might try and go for a sort of a sunburst if I can. But anyway, I think, I think I'm going to go with this fretboard got a problem with it in so much as I've got a little hole in the back there but I think I can fill that and I don't think it's going to cause too much bother and I may even be able to position this in the right place to avoid that anyway okay so how to get this fretboard off took the rug out I didn't want to catch the whole place on fire um, of course having a long neck base means you've got a lot of fretboard to get rid of That's promising, gone all the way through.
that was an interesting job uh, came off in the end and I can see the truss rod which of course is glued in as well that truss rod there is really bowed out there um, it's glued in I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to pull that out Bingo. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a fretboard which is now considerably darker than it was at the start. I mean, that might be a way of making it darker, but uh, no, this has been discarded. I mean, it, it's probably usable. A bit bent. Anyway, um, and we have this amazingly bent truss rod. Which, no wonder um, it is jammed, quite honestly. Um, well, if we can do something with it. There we are. Bring it back to some sort of normality there. Obviously, I, I'd over tighten that. I mean, that's pretty clear that that's been over tightened completely uh, I think it's still usable though so I shall clean it up and uh, probably put it back in this guitar anyway I think this is going to be quite a long project so I'm going to call it a day for this video thank you very much for watching um, you know, please look out for the next instalment of this uh, refit, see how it goes. And um, if you've got any questions or any advice for me, please don't hesitate to uh, put it in the comments because I really enjoy reading. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. In the meantime, stay safe.